Hi guys, it's Fiona. For those of you that don't know me, I'm an equine herbalist and body worker and I've been doing herbs and natural therapies for horses for about 20 odd years now. I do Bowen and Emmet, uh, iridology, acupressure, acupuncture, Chinese medicine, energy work and other therapies to help horses. Today I thought we'd look at the nervous horse and the implications of always being under stress. So we need to treat the horse as a whole and not just medicate the horse with herbs. They're useful, but we need to look a little bit more closely. Why is the horse nervous? Does the horse have ulcers or sand? Is there pain? Because if they're in pain, then in the wild they would have, they'd be left behind and wouldn't be able to keep up and they would have predators after them. So there's lots of reasons why the horse may be nervous. Maybe the horse has had an abused history. Maybe it needs a little bit more help with the training, that little extra few steps before the horse is put under pressure. All sorts of reasons. Now there are implications for the horse's body if it is in a constant state of anxiety. In fact, really big implications. As you can see in the photo here, the adrenals are just over the kidneys. They're roughly 12 centimetres long and about 5 centimetres wide and they sit in front of each kidney. The cortisol and cortisone and all those other chemicals from the adrenal glands regulate protein, fat and mineral metabolism. So if the adrenals are under pressure they will have trouble regulating the fat and the protein and the mineral absorption. The chemicals also have an anti-inflammatory effect on the immune system. There are other chemicals that regulate the salt levels, the sodium levels, the water balance and the blood pressure and there are other chemicals that act on sperm production in stallions and affect the reproductive behaviours in both sexes. So the effect or some of the effects of stress and nervous tension on the horse's body, inefficient digestion or absorption, inability to hold condition, now not all nervous horses you know have trouble holding condition, Hormonal imbalances, structural weaknesses, maybe a thyroid imbalance and poor immunity like chronic dermatitis on the skin, foot abscesses and poor wound healing are just some of the things. The liver will be under pressure, the spleen function, the spleen meridian I should say because the horses don't have a spleen. The respiratory tract, the lungs and all that will be under a lot of pressure and the blood will be under pressure. So to help with this the horse needs to be brought back into balance for an effective treatment. The herbs that we could look at are nervines. Now vervain is one, I don't use it a lot but it's really good for a horse who's sensitive and twitchy, you know that twitchy skin. Be careful if you use it for the wrong sort of horse, it actually doesn't help at all. Chamomile is really good for a horse who holds tension in the gut, that digestive system. Maybe when you take it out, it um, has a bit of diarrhea or loose manure. So chamomile is really good for that sort of horse. And chamomile is really good, it can be balanced and used in conjunction with other herbs. Valerian is for a horse who's got that tight muscles. When you feel the muscle, it's just like rock hard. If you use valerian, I would use probably the powder because the actual root is quite tough and hard for them to eat, so the powder, maybe a teaspoon or so in feed. Be careful with valerian, if you feed too much you can have the opposite result. Hops is another herb for a horse that's mentally distracted, looking around all the time, can't focus. Um, it's a very bitter herb, so if you get the whole flowers, just uh, crunch it up and pop it in the feed, introduce it slowly. You can use these in combination and there are many, many other herbs that you could use to help the nervous horse. If you're taking one of these horses out somewhere, perhaps consider using rescue remedy. You can spray it in the mouth or on your hand and wipe it over the horse's forehead. If you want to know a little bit more about herbs, I have my two 
her book, Secret Herbal Recipes for Horses, is a really good introductory book for the person that doesn't know much about herbs and horses. The second book, The Herbal Hoof and Leg, is a little bit more detail with remedies and ideas to help horses with hoof and leg problems. So I'm Fiona and I'm wishing you and your horses health and happiness. You can find me on herbalhorses.com or holistic horse therapies.